Howdy folks, this is John from rchelicopterfund.com. RC Heli Review Day today. Haven't had one of these in a while, have we? I want to thank the uh, good folks at Banggood for making this review possible, so let's get into it. This is the XK K130. This is XK's highest performance micro collective pitch in their lineup. It's 2S powered, full metal head, all the good stuff. Uh, so this is going to be quite a bit different from the K123 and K124 that I had done a review on several months back. We're going to uh, go over its features, see what it comes with, and get the batteries charging up, go for a test flight. I'll go over my basic setup real quick at the end of the video, and hopefully by the time it's all over, uh, this will give you a pretty good idea if this is a little micro CP heli you would like to add to your own fleet. Now, this is the FTR version, so Futaba transmitter ready. I'm gonna be binding it to my FR Sky Horus radio. Now, how do we get into this? Ah, there we go. Oh, geez. So, instructions. Who needs those? What do we have here? Okay, yeah, in this version it shipped with uh, some extra batteries. So I think we've got uh, three battery packs in total. Now these are a, a 2S pack, 600 milliamp hour. Come on, hopefully you can see that. And little um, XT30 connectors on them. Got a USB charger. And it looks like we can only charge one pack at a time. As far as spares go, typical stuff we normally see with XK's helis. We've got a spare set of rotor blades, spare main gear in case you either cam it out or strip some teeth off. Got a set of control links, one spare tail blade, 1.5 millimeter Allen key, and a little Phillips screwdriver. Let's uh, see what size this thing is. So they're calling it a 130. Let's uh, confirm that here. Yep, uh, blade size I guess is about 138. Some kind of composite plastic. Might be glass fiber reinforced, can't tell. But they are stiff. Now the heli itself. I think we might be calling this one the Spider-Man. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you right now, it's pretty decent looking right off the bat. Metal head, metal swash plate even, carbon fiber tail boom, nice strong fin, looks like it's going to be able to take quite a bit of abuse. Pretty beefy coreless tail motor. Direct drive, of course. All the wiring is nicely protected. Can't even hardly see it. It's inside this plastic housing. Obviously, it goes up the tail boom. But yeah, definitely uh, we'll consider this the Spider Man. Now, let's take a peek inside. I'm just going to reposition the camera so we can get a better look at everything here. Canopy is very decent looking. It's a neat shape. The red and blue may be hard to see. I'm not uh, great with red and blue, but everyone's different. But just your typical polycarbonate canopy. Ventilation slots in the front, some on the bottom as well. Now the helicopter itself, a little bit different arrangement from XK's other helicopters where the brushless motor is offset. This one's quite a bit bigger and it's centered in the machine. The three cyclic rotary servos are positioned in a 120 degree arrangement. Of course it's 120 degree ECCPM. The geometry, we can see the servo arms are centered. Swash is level left to right. No play, up or down play in the shaft, so everything's tight. 
They've got the little retaining collar nice and tight against the upper bearing. This wire management here isn't great. There's a chance that some of the tail rotor motor wiring, this red one anyway, could rub on the outrunner motor. Might just be anecdotal to my little unit here, but I'm probably going to zip tie these off just to make sure none of these wires could uh, hit that motor. There's our XT30 connector on the side. You can replace the battery with the canopy on, so that's nice. Battery slides in the bottom here, and you can plug it in when the canopy's on. Nice, strong, flexible. Oops, well, not that flexible. Already busted it. Well, there's our first problem. Already broke the skid. Typical layout, uh, we've got the ESC on the bottom here, and the main control board for the receiver and the tail mixer and the fly barless unit which is under this little red or orange cover. Uh, it doesn't use an antenna wire, it uses a PCB antenna grid array. This, believe it or not, according to the instruction manual, is for DSM. So it looks like you could possibly hook a DSM 2 receiver up to this or a DSMX and fly it with Spectrum. And they've also got, uh, they're saying you can run Futaba S-Bus as well with it. So I imagine FR Sky S-Bus as well. That's very cool if it's true. Might have to do a v another video on that one though. Uh, out of the box it comes Futaba SFHSS protocol enabled. And if you've already got an XK, uh, one of their little uh, computerized radios, it'll just bind to that. Tail boom is big diameter, nice and stiff, going to be really strong, going to be hard to break that, I'm sure. There's no slop. The little bit of play in there is just linkage play in the armhole, the servo control armhole. This is very interesting. Uh, it's actually using washout arms. You don't see many micro helis that are running washout arms off the uh, head. Most of them are all DFC style. So that is very cool. Big head block. So really impressed with the uh, metal head. Nice little head button. Got the little USB charger plugged in. It has a kind of a smoke translucent shell and you can see a little LED through it that's blinking. It's kind of hard to see though. And it charges through the balance leads of the battery, not through the main power plug. And there the little LED has gone solid red and I'm guessing when it's fully charged it'll either go out or change to a different color. Let's check out the flying weight. I've already got the battery pack in there and here's the canopy. So flying weight's 130 grams roughly, 4.5 ounces so we're easily well below the 250 gram weight restriction limit here in Kanakistan and so many other places in the world where they're imposing just unrealistic uh, RC flying regulations. So that's good. Just before heading out I thought uh, we'd check the battery size for anyone who's interested in case you're wondering what size it is. If you might have already packs that would fit this. Of course it, again it's a 2S pack 600 milliamp hour but it is roughly 60 millimeters in length. About 17 millimeters in width and just over 14 millimeters in height and that uh, those dimensions especially the thickness and the height are quite critical because it slides into this tray like so there's a little end plate on the end of the tray that the battery will bottom out on as you slide it in so you can't push it in overly far uh, of course you can replace the battery with the canopy on I've just got it off to show that and and then as far as plugging it in, uh, pretty simple. Just grab the XT30 and plug them in. Let the gyros initialize. There's a little notch in the side of the landing skid here that I thought maybe this XT30 would snap into, but it doesn't. It's too thin. So uh, obviously they've just got it there for the wiring to go through. Uh, it might not hurt to zip tie that. As you can see, I've already zip tie this wire bundle to just neaten up the wire management here and just ensure that the tail rotor wire does not rub on the outrunner motor. Oh, and the landing skid, 
Um, this is a repair trick I use on little micros. CA glue doesn't bond that well to this type of plastic. So what I do is I just take a little piece of heat shrink, uh, cut it however long you want, I slide it right up, and then I'll put a thin layer of hot glue all the way around, and of course on the brake itself, and then I will slide the heat shrink down, heat the heat shrink up, and it will compress all that hot glue in there so the heat shrink won't move, the hot glue sticks well, and it makes a really strong repair. And you can't really see it that bad. So that's what we've done there. Uh, now we'll go flying. Okay, I guess it's go time. I've just got a really tame setup to start with here. So we'll see how it is off the bench. A bit of a breeze. It's there we go. So that's hands off there. And it's uh now it's a micro. Doesn't like this gusty little breeze we've got here today. Not bad. So this is in tame mode. I'm gonna. So with it tamed right down, there's the cyclic response. Doesn't have tail rotor compensation. Three. Or pure wet compensation. Ooh. You know what? The collective feels really sticky. I don't know if it's because of the gusty wind. But it's hopping. Nah, it's the wind. Anyway, let's go into high rates. And idle up one. Go into a slightly higher head speed. Do some pitch pumps here. Tails holding. Shit is about to get real. Well, tail holds doing those pitch pumps. Oh, it's, I think the collective jam there. Oh, it's responsive. Now this wind is difficult at best. Tail's holding. Not exactly happy about it. But it's a it's a handful. You know, it can be tamed right down for sure, but oh it's responsive. And that's about plus minus twelve degrees collective guys, so I'm getting a little bit better of a feel. The wind's calmed down here. Oh, that collect is responsive, and it feels sticky a little bit. Normal mode. Well, folks, uh, that's the end of that helicopter. Um, this is probably the worst micro crash I've ever had. Uh, it uh, it got away on me, and as you can see, things went sideways really fast. Landing gear is completely shattered, tore out half the wiring. Um, it's basically shot. As with most crashes, things always look worse than they are. The worst damage is to the ESC. Actually, it's still intact, but the uh, you know the landing strut assembly that has the battery in it uh, it sheared right off. All the little pins sheared right out of the main frame section. And the unfortunate thing is it pulled the uh, ESC board out with it. And the ESC, there's no protection. It's not held in at all. It's just sandwiched between those. So that was a little bit disappointing. I've pulled the uh, positive wire right out of this little power plug from the ESC that goes up to the main control board. Uh, pulled one of the pins out from the brushless motor. But considering the amount of energy that was released, surprise not more damage was done. Blades are still intact, big chunk missing out of that one. 
but the boom is still intact. Nothing wrong with the frame. Uh, the main shaft doesn't appear to be bent at all. Feathering shaft might be bent. The servos, I've stripped out the cyclic and the pitch servo, or sorry, the aileron and the pitch servo. The elevator servo though, gears appear to be intact on that one. So we've destroyed two servos. These, by the way, use the same servo gears as the Align 150X and probably a lot of other little micro servos. So we can get replacement servo gears. Although, uh, you know, the servos are pretty cheap for these things. Uh, tail rotor is still in good shape. Um, one thing that I noticed when I was flying, I think I mentioned it, but if not, this red and blue with the black, so difficult, uh, at least for my eyes to pick up. I just hate this color scheme, as I had mentioned before. And against the white, the bright white snow, it was even harder. And I know my camera person had a real hard time um, tracking it as well. But that would be another complaint. And by all means, don't uh, consider this crash uh, you know, a knock against the helicopter. Again, it goes, it goes right down to show you that if you pick a helicopter that's not suited to your flying style, um, and if you fly it beyond your flying style, this is what is going to happen. You know, up until the point where I lost control, you know, it was flying good. There was stuff about it I didn't like. Remember I said the collective was sticking, and I figured out why that is the bearings in the blade grips are actually overly preloaded and you can feel how notchy they are. So if you get one of these things, pop the links off on them and move the blade grips. And if you feel they're really notchy, uh, there's too much preload on there and you're going to either have to shave down the little washers that are preloading the bearings up on the head axle between the head and the blade grip or just use smaller ones. And I should have checked that before I went flying. Uh, that was my mistake. But really, we shouldn't have to do that. You know, on a large helicopter, it's something I'd always check. So why wouldn't I check it on this one? But really, for the amount of energy that was released, unbelievable that uh, not more damage was done. Certainly the weak point on these is the uh, landing gear. And the canopy did crack pretty bad when it hit the, uh, it actually hit the tailgate of our vehicle. That's what it hit. Every crash is gonna be different, of course, but uh, it released a lot of energy when it hit. Like I said, this is the most damage I've ever had to a micro, and I've crashed a lot of them. Here's the Blade 130X, which is the exact same size pretty much as this one. I've never done that much damage to it. And my little T-Rex 150X, which is by far my favorite little micro aerobatic heli to practice on in the yard. Uh, I've crashed it so hard and just nothing. It, it, it's amazing. You know, I've bent the boom, but other than that, it's a lot lighter and it doesn't release as much energy like this one did. So that's kind of my final thoughts on it. Sorry guys that I busted it up before I finished the uh, review on it, but that gives you an honest review, right? Not every heli is going to be su perfectly suited to everyone. You can certainly tame this down and uh, you know, set it up for your flying style, but if you want to fly it at full power and, you know, no reduction on your collective, so you're running full cyclic range, yeah, it's going to be a handful. And for anyone who's interested now, I'll just go over my final setup here in the radio so you've got an idea of how I've set this thing up. We'll just go over the setup real quick of the K130. I'm using the same basic principles that I use in my collective pitch setup and tips ebook. Fire a little photo of it up there, have a link below in the description. So any of you who have got that uh, ebook, this will all be pretty familiar stuff. And we'll just go into the model setup real quick. So I've just called it the K130 um, using uh, image file for it. I've set the timer at four minutes. This seems to be good from the little bit I did fly it for general flight. If you're flying it at full power all the time, I think you're going to be lucky if you get three minutes safely out of a lipo pack. If you're flying it really tame at low reduced head speed, you might be getting up to about five minutes or so. And then the only other thing I wanted to show on here is we're using the multi-protocol module 
And of course, all of XK's helicopters use the Futaba SFHSS protocol. Now, for helicopter setup, of course, we're not using any type of swash mixing. This is all the swash mixing is done within the FBL system, the fly barless unit. So you don't uh, worry about swash mixing at all. Flight moans, we're not going to worry about that. Uh, this is my inputs. This is where I set my dual and exponential rates for my aileron elevator and rudder. Uh, I've got 100% when dual rates are turned off, of course, but using quite a bit of positive expo plus 50. My mid dual rate 75 uh, plus 30% exponential and my low dual rate for tame flight 55% on aileron. Exactly the same for elevator and then rudder basically the same except for the low 50% value of dual rate to keep the tail rotor just a little bit more manageable and using a little bit of positive expo of plus 10%. Uh, nothing really in the mix here just wanted to point out though that um, your throttle is on channel 3 just like all the Futaba stuff so channel 3 is your throttle output not channel 1 and then as far as the outputs first we'll go over the centering position 1500 microseconds on all of them except for channel 6 which is collect a pitch we'll get into that in a bit uh, we're using plus minus 80 percent on aileron and elevator uh, anything higher it just it over travels it it's too aggressive i found channel 3 which is uh, throttle 90 percent plus minus channel 4 tail rotor plus minus 90 percent and channel 5 is plus minus 90 that's to uh, turn the accelerometer help on or off during the flight of course it was turned off it was just in what they call 3g mode so just your three gyro um, stabilization mode and if it's turned on then you've got the six axis stabilization the three gyros and the three accelerometers for self-level help and now channel six i had to reduce the outputs to plus minus 32 percent to get the plus minus 12 degrees of collective and again, that's exactly like I show in the Setup and Tips ebook in Chapter 3 under Micro Heli Setup. And I had to change the centering position to 1482 to get a symmetrical collective range. So 1482, but they're all going to be different. That's all dictated by the push rod geometry, by the push rod length where the swash plate is sitting in the neutral position. Now we'll go to our curves. Nothing exciting here, so for throttle normal, 0% at low stick, of course, so we can throttle down. And then roughly 40% power up to about 70% power. And for normal flying, I'm um, running basically about 70% power from mid stick up to high stick. Maybe going down to about 60% power at low. For throttle, or for my full speed or aerobatic uh, throttle curve, I'm at a flat line 85%. That's what's... Uh, recommended in the uh, instruction manual. Noticed anything above 85%, the head speed did not increase at all. So 85% seems to be the highest head speed. Throttle hold, we've got 0% power. So if you hit throttle hold, it powers down the helicopter. And for our pitch curves, normal, we're running about zero degrees up to about plus eight. My normal flight mode about minus two to plus nine and then full aerobatic minus 12 to plus 12 just a linear pitch curve and my throttle hold pitch curve a flat line at zero degrees collective that's how i set up all my micros when i hit throttle hold i like the main blades to produce zero degrees collective i find they tend not to strip out the servo gears as easy that way or do as much damage that's just the way i do it of course everyone's going to be different and that's pretty much it for the setup so if you're thinking of getting one of these, hopefully this little review and <laughs> horrible flight demo gave you some more information on them. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Cheers folks, happy flights. Bring it in, we'll try to get some closer in shots. So that's the side. Collective feels a little sticky. I don't know if the blade grip bearings are over preloaded. Rudder high. So now we'll go rudder high rate. So you can get an idea of the tail, the yaw there. Come on, get back here. It is reactive, and I'll tell you right now, I hate this blue and red color. I don't know if it's just my eyes, but I have a hard time with blue and red. So XK loose Spider-Man. Put some white in there where the blue is or yellow.
tail seems to be not bad. It, you can tell it's um, it's not a brushless tail motor, and you can you can feel that has bounce back. Yeah, it's I don't like the tail response at all on this one. With you with low dual rate on rudder, it's not bad. It's a little more predictable. Idle up one. So we'll go to higher head speed. Middle rate. Go to middle rates on cyclic. Fairly responsive. So that would be a nice sport setup. A little bit of shivering in the tail, but as far as the helicopter flight goes, it's really nice. It, it's got a pretty decent feel. But it's a micro and it is reactive. It doesn't have the fluidity of a larger machine, of course. Again, it gets out of shape quick. Well, let's go to full head speed. Shit is about to get real. Okay, and I'm running plus minus 12 collective here. So a little bit of tail blow out there.